it's all yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna present uh, two topics, two related topics today, and it's mostly joint work with my former student, Louis Lee, who graduated uh, last May. Um, and uh, I would acknowledge uh, supports from National Science Foundation uh, and Simons Foundation, as well as uh, IPAMS Hospitality for, for uh, hosting a workshop where we stay uh, in 2019. Uh, in fact, that's where most of this work has been done. Okay, so this is the overview. Um, uh, as we have seen in many talks in this conference, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of sensors that one can use, and these sensors uh, will, uh, will, will give us uh, distance information, uh, the distance from the sensor to, uh, to the obstacles uh, following line of sight. Uh, in the previous talk, we just heard about uh, depth uh, estimation, uh, which can be used in what we're considering. Uh, so uh, we're thinking about applications using this kind of uh, 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 depth information along each line of sight. And the uh, targeted uh, kind of uh, situation is we imagine that there are autonomous robotic agents such as, such as uh, you know, aerials or driving vehicles uh, performing uh, certain tasks that optimizes for uh, line of sight uh, objectives. Uh, in particular, in this talk, I'm gonna talk about uh, two types. And the first type is, uh, we call it exploration uh, or surveillance problems. And the second type is uh, to uh, come up with an algorithm that provides a vision-based tracking of the moving uh, of moving targets, and possibly as you track, one can provide learning of uh, uh, the motions or the strategy of uh, the, the targets. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so the challenge that we were thinking about that we're trying to tackle is uh, uh, that uh, posed by uh, the fact that uh, the environments uh, could be very complicated. Uh, involving buildings, uh, very complicated geometries, et cetera. Um, and uh, uh, one of our objectives in developing uh, uh, the algorithms uh, related to these two blue, uh, bullet points is uh, to uh, develop uh, strategies that also learn the dependence of our solutions on the domain shape. So the domain shape, when I say domain shape, it means the geometry, the buildings, the obstacle, obstacles in the in uh, present in, in a bounded domain. Okay, so let's go on to the first topic, exploration and surveillance. Um, so here's a, a, a more mathematical problem formulation. Uh, we go through some notations. Hopefully that would help us uh, 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 or help me describe the, the, the problem and the setup for the algorithms. So uh, we're working in a bounded domain, which is uh, denoted by D and uh, there's a free space, so there are obstacles uh, in the free uh, in this domain D, and uh, <clears throat> we would denote in this talk omega to be the free space, the the, the space uh, away from these obstacles where the, the moving agents uh, uh, supposedly can move around freely, um, and we would denote x uh, x i to be the location where we make observations about our environments. So, so this is where we have we will use. Uh, for example, LIDAR to sample the depth along each line of sight uh, uh, from this particular vantage point, uh, XI. And from this uh, depth information, uh, we're going to uh, compute uh, or derive uh, what we call the visibility from the sensor location XI. Uh, and this is denoted by this V sub XI of omega. So this, is, this, is a, this will be a set where the line of sight uh, emanating from XI is, is not obstructed by uh, any of the obstacles in the environment. <clears throat> so on the picture on, on the right, uh, you see a, a cartoon image of such kind of thing where you have an obstacle in the center and then a sensor is placed at X naught on the lower left corner. Uh, the gray area is where, uh, you know, line of sight emanating from X naught are obstructed by uh, the obstacles and the white area is the uh, visibility uh, from X zero. Now, if you imagine uh, we're gonna move uh, this guy X naught to a next location, say X one, and then uh, you know turn on the sensor again at X one, then of course we will have information about the visibility of X one, which is this white uh, set on the lower uh, right uh, uh, figure. Uh, then you can take unions of these two sets uh, that would uh, collectively represents the area that has been already uh, 
uh, inspected or explored uh, from the two sensors, X0 and, and, and X1. So in general, if you think about uh, placing K plus one sensors, then you just take unions of sets. And we call this, uh, uh, this unit, the, the unit of these sets, omega sub K, uh, we call it uh, the cumulative visible, visible set. Okay, so this is the setup uh, and the notation that we're gonna use. And this is the range. Uh, so these informations, uh, uh, the visibility uh, are inferred from the depth information as illustrated over here. And we always, in this talk, we always assume that we have this, uh, uh, the availability, availability of the depth information uh, in every possible direction. Okay, just for uh, simpli simplification. Um, okay, uh, so this is the cumulative visibility set. Uh, if you put, if, if one place is X, uh, two sensors, X0 and X1 uh, at the locations, then uh, collectively what cannot be seen from these two sensors will be the gray area like that. Okay, and uh, of course, it's not hard to imagine that if we keep uh, placing sensors, uh, uh, taking uh, observations of the environment, then the gray area will, be, will, will shrink and, and eventually it will not, uh, nothing will change anymore because uh, you cannot penetrate uh, through the obstacles. So in other words, uh, if you have a sufficient number of uh, observations, then the union, then the set omega k would actually corresponds to uh, will be identical to the obstacle set, uh, to, to be the free space outside of the obstacle set. And that's the idea. Uh, um, but then we, we, we try to be a little bit more aggressive. We, we try to ask the question, what would be uh, the minimal number of uh, observations that is needed to uh, make a complete observation uh, of all the free space or all the obstacles inside this piece of domain D. And this could be uh, kind of uh, formulated um, in, in, a, in, 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 in kind of a compressed sensing style uh, optimization problem. Uh, uh, that it, it more particularly, if you slap on the grid or over this uh, domain D and you say that I, you only want, we, we're only uh, need, uh, interested in placing sensor locations on the grid nodes on this uh, um, in, uh, over D, then we're looking for the least number of sensor locations, so that will be minimizing the uh, the the L zero norm of I, uh, subject to a hard constraint that the union of what they can see from collectively from where you place the sensor has to be identical to the free space. Um, and this is formulated for the surveillance problem in the sense that we say the problem is, surve of, uh, is a surveillance problem if we know the free space in advance. Uh, so uh, the uh, you, you can place, possibly place uh, the sensors in anywhere else as, uh, in, in Omega. Um, and we will talk about exploration, this uh, uh, problems very soon. So again, you know, we're trying to minimize the L0 norm of, of, um, of so try to find minimum number of sensing uh, locations uh, in order to uh, observe the environment. And then with a the constraint that, uh, you know, to collectively they have to observe the entire free space. Okay, um, and what would be the algorithm? And, uh, so we, uh, we, we try to solve, provide an algorithm that, which is a greedy algorithm to solve uh, this problem over here uh, that, that is outlined in this gray box. Um, and this, uh, this algorithm, uh, if we look at this algorithm over here, uh, it involves uh, you know, finding uh, where a function which we call the gain function G, uh, where this uh, gain function will, will take maximum and then that will be uh, the next observation location. And the motivation is the following. So if we start out at some, uh, at the, the initial vantage point X is zero and make observations and then anywhere uh, behind uh, this region enclosed by the dash line, uh, we don't have any ideas. And we say that uh, we would like to find the next observation location that uh, reveal as much of the areas in, uh, in, in this uh, region as much, uh, as much as possible. And uh, so in the picture over here, the, we define, um, so it shows us how we define uh, the gain function, the gain in the amount of information that we can uh, learn, new information that we can learn by placing a sensor at a uh, uh, vantage point. Uh, located at X1. And that would be the area of this green region, which is uncovered, uh, which is previously occluded from X0, but uncovered if you put a, a vantage point at X1 over there. So this area is defined as the gain uh, at uh, X1. So if you do this, uh, if you can compute 
the gain function for every possible point, uh, then, then uh, you can consider uh, writing such a kind of a greedy algorithm. The next location would naturally be the location where you max you, you uh, where where the gain is uh, maximized. That's where you are gonna uh, get uh, get the most uh, uh, new information. You can also add some regularization if you have some preference that your observation location has to come in a sequence and they have to uh, they cannot jump around the, the environment. So that's possible, but in, uh, in in this part of the talk, we'll just assume that this is not there just for the cleanness of uh, analyzing the algorithm. Okay, now, um, so this is our approach. Again, it's a greedy algorithm that max, you know, that, that finds uh, where you can have maximum uh, gain in, in the information, but then we probably realize that this information, so if we have the map, then of course one can simulate this uh, on a computer perform simulation, but this, the, the computation of gain for every point, so this will be in the end, uh, some kind of heat map, it's rather expensive. So in R2, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of computation is, uh, is like a four dimensional computation and in R3 it will be like a six dimensional computation. So it's too costly. So, and, and also suppose we, we want to use this kind of greedy algorithm in an environment that hasn't, we have not seen before, then how do we define such kind of gain functions? So our idea is to actually to, to learn uh, the gain function by a neural network, uh, by a convolution neural network based on the UNET structure, um, where uh, you know, this is going to be trained uh, by looking at uh, uh, data sets of city uh, of, of uh, relevant uh, city uh, configurations. So for if, if one is interested in the urban kind of simulation in the urban kind of com uh, ur urban uh, um, environment. And then, uh, and, and then, so at the runtime, this G sub theta will give us inference on possible gain values. Uh, and of course, uh, this, this approach here, this greedy uh, algorithm written this way abstractly, it doesn't really, it's not really limited to uh, the use of depth information and, and, and uh, the particular notion that we use in this work, which is the gain in the visible area. One can provide different weightings, et cetera. Um, so um, as you will see in the following slides, uh, the training, the formulation for uh, learning this gain function uh, actually requires some thought. And uh, improper setup actually leads to, of course, imp uh, you know, fail the learning. And part of the training data uh, actually should be simulated following the greedy algorithm, uh, that this is what you see. And what, uh, in, in, from the earlier slides, we understand that we need to take unions of the visibility of these uh, previous vantage points. And this is handled by uh, what is it called, uh, you know, a, a level set method. This is an Im implicit representation of uh, surfaces and also uh, volumes in close by close, uh, closed surfaces, uh, which was invented uh, jointly by Stanley Osher uh, at UCLA. Um, it's, uh, it has been widely used in, in many other scientific computing uh, scenario applications. So this is how we train the gain function G sub theta. Um, the, the training uh, data pair will consist of uh, the, cumulus, the level set representation of the cumulative visibility, what collectively uh, from the, 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 so in this uh, page over here, the two blue, the, the two red dots are the current uh, vantage points location. And uh, this uh, image, the second column uh, shows collectively what they can see and what they cannot see. And also from these vantage locations and cumulative visibility, another important information is the, uh, is the frontier edge set. So together with uh, the psi and B denoted over here, this will be this, the, these two uh, will be the X part of the training uh, data. And then the, the, the Y part of the training data will be actually computed, uh, you know, pre-computed, and this will be an image where a brighter uh, value on a pixel denotes higher gain value in a normalized section. Uh, then we have, we simulate the algorithm. So according to, the, to our greedy algorithm, the next step, the next vantage location would be placed where, uh, you know, uh, at the brightest uh, pixel of uh, this image um, on the, on the uh, fourth column. So then you go there and then you simulate uh, and you get this, this uh, cumulative visibility and then the frontier set and then the corresponding gain and then you simulate this algorithm again. Uh, so um, 
so this is how we uh, provide, uh, compute the training data uh, to uh, to do um, to, to to learn this uh, gain function. So uh, uh, in other words, um, we are going to draw from a database of uh, relevant shapes, urban shapes, for example, and then from the these database, we're going to randomly select a corner. Uh, you know, related to the scale, length scale that we're interested. And then in there, we randomly select initial points X naught, and then we try to simulate the greedy algorithm using these map. Um, so each one of the, 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 the curve-like structure will, will give you a sequence of uh, shapes uh, that includes uh, the cumulative visibility as well as the frontier set. And then you simulate the, the algorithm until you have complete visibility of that particular grid. Um, and you do this so, uh, on this horizontal uh, edge over here is uh, how you sample the relevant uh, city grid. But then you, in, you know, the relevant data manifold that will enable a successful, a successful learning of this uh, game function uh, actually requires you to actually simulate the algorithms. Uh, so that uh, um, I like to say that so that the causality of, uh, from one shape to the other shape is actually also sampled. So we view, so one other view uh, is, is that this gain function is actually functions of um, these, uh, you know, shapes, these, product, these uh, uh, pairs of shapes. One is this black and white images and the other one is this kind of edge set. So it's a function of the shape and then it will spit out, uh, you know, an image, um, which is the gain function. So uh, shape space is very, very, very large uh, in order to have the right uh, learning. Um, one needs to, to kind of uh, uh, make sure that we are sampling the right um, subset of the, this really large uh, space. Okay, so these are um, two examples. Um, this is actually, uh, okay. So on the left is actually a, a, a neighborhood of Chicago. And this is the algorithm that the, the, the output of our algorithms where the blue circles denote where you, we turn on the sensor to measure the environment. And here we turn on the regularization saying that we don't want the algorithm to, uh, we want uh, the, the, um, the next vantage point to be within a suitable, uh, you know, sufficiently small neighborhood of the previous ones uh, so that the, you, know, you don't jump around the environment. And this is exploring, meaning that um, we don't assume that we know the city grid of uh, this particular city grid. And uh, from XK to XK plus one, the possible candidates uh, for XK plus one will be those uh, free regions which has already been explored from the previous vantage point, which is different from the surveillance setup. Um, on the right is actually uh, high resolution simulations uh, involving 1,024 uh, by 700 something by, I don't know, around 100 grid nodes. So this is, a, uh, this is a quite a big uh, 3D volume. And we used uh, the algorithm to do this uh, exploration. And in this uh, video clip, you see that the vantage points determined by the algorithms to explore such a region are denoted by the green dots. And um, uh, without any prior, you know, uh, prior knowledge about uh, the domain configuration, uh, I would just like to point out that the, the algorithm, uh, if you look at the distribution of the algorithms, uh, the, the vantage point where they are, it seems uh, that, uh, you know, uh, you know if, if you have an intelligent human beings determining these uh, observation locations, those were, would be reasonable locations to put the, uh, to, to put the um, uh, uh, observation locations. And in particular, this frame over here, you see that uh, the algorithm would somehow detect that there's an overhang region uh, and then decide, so let me put this one here, stop. Uh, and, and somehow decide to, turn, uh, to put a uh, vantage point over here in order to come un uncover the, the areas, the, the volume inside you know, underneath the overhanging deck. Okay, so this is uh, the simulation of the algorithms and uh, you know, the fee forward time is actually you know, uh, close to be deployable in, in, um, in real time if, if one uses GPU uh, to do this. Okay. Um, and this is a comparison uh, just to show you how this uh, learned that this neural G sub theta 
uh, when, if we use a piece of data in the greedy algorithm, how it will compare to if we compute everything exactly and simulate the, the greedy algorithm. So of course, uh, the blue curve here uh, denotes the, the exact performance, the, 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 the curve from the exact simulation uh, using exact gain function. And then the red curve on top of it is when you use the right uh, G sub theta, uh, a G sub theta that is learned from the data pair that consists of the cumulative visibility as well as the frontier set uh, in, uh, with, with, the, with, with a set of uh, uh, city uh, with uh, you know, geometry sample from relevant urban environments. Um, the vertical axis uh, is in, in a normal, normalized fashion uh, denotes uh, the total area that has not been uh, explored uh, along the steps. The horizontal uh, axis shows you how many steps. Uh, each step, with each step, you, you, you add one more observation locations. And uh, so you, you can see that in such a situation, uh, uh, in such a study, a properly trained uh, neural network will give you a performance that's close to I think when, when you use uh, the, the exact gain function in the greedy algorithm. Whereas if you, uh, in the training part, if you just ignore, uh, say, the frontier set, so this will be uh, the, the, the purple curve over here. If you ignore the frontier part, then um, somehow um, the, one cannot uh, pick up uh, the mechanism of uh, determining uh, what, what, what can be uncovered that effectively. So that will, that this is shown by the, by the purple curve. Okay, so uh, here comes some theory, right? So the next question uh, that one can ask is, so what we have seen is that uh, we, can, we, we, we have a neural network that can learn how to compute the gain function and gives reasonable approximations. Okay, and then the next question is more mathematical. Then it's about uh, you know how optimal is the greedy algorithm uh, in solving the problem that we wanted to solve in the in the in the beginning, namely uh, finding the least number of observation locations to to have complete observation of the environment. Um, and uh, so this is the this part of the uh, in this part of the talk, I will quickly give you uh, some um, some results that we have obtained. And then there's also what would be the difference between the surveillance problem where you can place uh, observation location anywhere in the free space uh, in omega uh, versus the exploration problem where the next vantage point has to can only be placed in the in the free area that you have already uh, uh, examined. So in this uh, 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 figure on the lower right corner, you see that uh, if you have you start out with x zero over here. If you run the surveillance uh, program um, algorithm, then uh, it's reasonable that the, the, the next vantage point to maximize the gain would somewhere be behind the shadow. So uh, for in the surveillance problem, you're allowed to put a vantage point over there. Whereas in, in the exploration problem, you're only allowed to put the next vantage point somewhere in the white region. So this is for example, over here, so you can see that. So what, what's the difference then in the performance of a, a greedy algorithm, uh, the, the surveillance version of the greedy algorithm and the exploration version of the greedy algorithm? So this is something that we will, we will discuss and then we'll also discuss some observation that we have uh, so far. Okay, so we can follow the, this uh, submodular uh, submodularity theory and develop a submodularity theory for uh, the performance uh, uh, for the optimality of the uh, surveillance version of the greedy algorithm. And it reads the, the following. Uh, suppose you assume that, uh, you know, you have a K census, which gives you the optimal observation. And, uh, and this is ideal. We actually don't know what omega star K would be. But now you have constructed uh, with uh, the greedy algorithm uh, N observations, uh, you know, solving the greedy algorithm, surveillance algorithm. Then, um, the, uh, what, so F denotes here the area uh, that the, you know, one has uh, absor uh, observed uh, from collectively from these uh, N uh, observing location, observation locations. And, and uh, F of uh, O star K would be the area observed by the optimal set, uh, K sensors. Uh, they are off by a factor which is 
one minus e to the uh, negative n divided by k. Um, so this uh, translates to if the optimal solution requires k steps, then after k greedy steps, uh, you know, we, we are guaranteed that the greedy algorithm will, will uncover, will discover at least 63% of the free volume that should be there. Well, this sounds not too optimal, but one can, be, because this estimate here is a little bit pessimistic uh, according to our experience. And then there's also uh, from the, uh, you know, the paper by these two gentlemen and, and some others, um, you know, uh, that the greedy algorithm actually uh, in polynomial time provides an optimal solution to such kind of problems. Okay, so, so this much we can say about um, the performance of the greedy surveillance algorithm. Um, what about the exploration uh, greedy algorithm? Well, so then what we discover is that uh, the performance uh, abound um, away from the optimal sensory location would depend on the arrangement of the obstacles, the geometry, the arrangement of these obstacles, and as well as the, you know, the initial conditions. So where you put the first sensor location, okay? So I should speed up a little bit. So uh, I think we, I'm just gonna skip these details over here and tell you that there's, of course, the, you know, there's more, more factor in, in there. And then this is the ratio uh, that tells you how the first observation location will contribute to the, to, to the whole thing. And then this row factor, which is uh, over here, tells you uh, in an ideal setup, what's the, what's the, the gap between a, the surveillance step, a surveillance step, and an exploration step? What's the, the path? The, 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 uh, yeah, what, what's the, the, the gap? Okay, so, but it's probably best il illustrated in the following figure over here. So imagine that you have a, uh, in, in an environment where you have buildings and you have very narrow, narrow alleys as denoted in the middle of the figure over here. And uh, uh, suppose you start out with uh, the first initial vantage point at location A and the surveillance algorithm will put uh, Point, uh, the next location, the vantage, vantage location at point C, which allows you to see this uh, very large uh, region. But uh, the exploration algorithm will give you, uh, will, 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 will tell you that you have to put the next vantage point at location B, which allows you to have just a very, you know, absolute incremental knowledge about the environment. And that constituted uh, the fundamental difference between, uh, between the surveillance and exploration algorithms. Because in the exploration setup, because you don't know that this will be uh, a, a large area. So you cannot put a point over there. Hi, and, Richard, I think we have a question okay. uh, by Benjamin. Uh, maybe I can, right. read, I can read it. Uh, well, um, that question was, 10 minutes ago, so maybe oh, we'll really? do it afterwards. It's okay. not, not fitting okay. right now, yeah. Okay, okay, so then, uh, so this is, the, this is basically uh, a, a very uh, kind of generic, uh, you know, uh, situations that tells you the difference, the worst scenario possible for, uh, uh, you know, running the algorithm in the exploration mode or in a surveillance mode. So then we do, uh, we're in academia, so we did some academic uh, examples that study the minimum number of uh, points, uh, gener the, the number of points uh, generated by the two algorithm, greedy algorithms for uh, exploring a circular domain con containing uh, different arrangement of disks. So surprisingly, um, you see that uh, in the surveillance, which we thought should be more optimal, actually terminates in seven steps, where exploration actually uses six steps. So what gives? So, uh, and the, the, both of the algorithms starts with the same initial conditions. So, uh, you know, what results in this kind of thing? Well, it turns out that uh, when in the surveillance algorithm, uh, in, some, in some sense, we optimize too much, uh, and uh, we will have small chunks of uh, regions that, that's left unexplored uh, after a few steps. And uh, after a significant number of, number of steps, you need to cut, you, you need to go back and, and uh, uh, deal with those unseen small chunks of areas as well. And this is our explanation of uh, that uh, uh, for, for such kind of uh, behavior. So we run, uh, we gather some statistics ranging from uh, environment from one circle all the way to six circles. And it, it turns out that uh, really the performance uh, uh, between the surveillance and the, explore, the exploration versions of the greedy algorithms seems to be 
somewhat similar, and sometimes actually if there's some evidence that exploration algorithm seems to be um, slightly superior, uh, at least for this kind of arrangements. Okay, so now the second part of the talk, um, I have uh, 10 minutes, and uh, I think you know we'll have time to go through uh, the majority of uh, the points that I would like to make. So uh, we want to learn optimal feedbacks for tracking wounding agents. Okay, so uh, we're thinking about uh, what we call surveillance evasion games, and it's best illustrated on this uh, movies. Uh, you know, on the right, uh, you have a pursuer denoted by the green, uh, the blue square, and then you have an evader uh, that's moving around, uh, denoted by the red circle, in an environment that consists in the here just the circular uh, obstacles that block the line of sight of the pursuer, and the two of them can play a game, and this game would be you know, the red guy is gonna move around and try to move into the shadow. Um, uh, and then the, the blue guy is gonna just move around in such a way that the red guy, try to prevent the, the, the red guy going into the shadow. So this is, uh, you would like to have following, visual, vision-based following of the red guy, right? You want to keep the red guy uh, under your, your line of sight as much as possible. And this is a simulation, uh, uh, you know, using uh, the strategy that we will be talking about uh, in later in, in coming a part of this uh, this talk, um, and we will deal with multiple players. One can think about multiple multiple players also. Um, and the question is, how do you set up? Um, so in, in this talk, we will think about red one as an adversary, and then uh, we, we will only thinking about uh, coming up with a. Uh, optimal or near optimal feedback strategy for moving the, the good guy, the pursuer, based on the, the knowledge about uh, the knowledge of the location of the red guy. Okay, so uh, we can formulate this as a control dynamical uh, uh, system uh, where you have uh, P stands for the pursuer's trajectory and then E stands for the evaders or the adversary's uh, trajectory. And they were controlled by, you know, respectively by sigma p and sigma e. And uh, you know, you're allowed to move. Uh, there is a, a cap on the uh, mobility, and then you're allowed to move in in, in all possible direction as long as you don't slam into the obstacles. Um, and the idea is to the the focus of uh, the, this talk. Uh, this part of the talk would be how do you come up with the uh, optimal uh, of a feedback strategy denoted here by pi sub phi, which is a function of uh, uh, the current location of both players uh, in order to prolong the game that we try to play as long as possible, the game would end the moment the, uh, the adversary get, uh, get into uh, the occlusion uh, of the pursuer. Okay, so um, I guess one can uh, one can one can skip this one. Basically, you, you formulate it as you know there's a there's a functional uh, j uh, which uh, which is which is the time of the game, um, and uh, as long as uh, the the two uh, players are a, um, away from uh, this end game uh, states, which is uh, you know y would be the in the occlusion of uh, of x then um, you know, the, the game uh, will, will, will stay. And you would like to come up with a, you know, a, a feedback strategy that uh, uh, optimizes in, in, in such kind of formulation. Okay, um, so this is a simulation. This is quite interesting. Uh, we did this by abusing a lot of computation power at the Texas Advanced Computing Facility, solving the, re the, the resulting hamilton jacobi isaac equations, uh, abusing a lot of computation of power and memory and to, to generate such kind of optimal strategy. So what you should observe is that, uh, well, this uh, HJI equation is rather simple, but you know, for this two, the, the two player games in this complicated scenario, you, you need to solve for uh, four, four dimensional, uh, solve this problem on a four dimensional grid uh, in a reasonable resolution so you can resolve the geometry over here. Uh, but it just gives you the flavor of this kind of game where the blue guy actually knows how to go ahead of the red guy into a suitable location and then wait there, guard that location. And then sometimes it will pause 
And then sometimes we'll decide not to pause and try to follow the red guy as, as close as possible. And this is all depend, de dependent on the geometry and the visibility um, of the blue from the blue guy due to the geometry. We have a okay. question. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to unmute Benjamin. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, in this simple example, why wouldn't the chaser just stay on top of the, the, the guy who tries to run away? Yes, because uh, in certain kind of geometry, it's possible that uh, the red guy would just take a quick turn and, and then you, you know, it would disappear. Um, so this should be understood as a game where you have discrete time stepping. So, you know, and, and then the two agents move synchronously. So at oh, time T, okay. yeah. yeah. and then you, at time TN, you try to determine what to do, what, where to arrive at TN plus one. And during okay. this duration, okay. the red guy could just, you, you will see an example. Yeah, Very okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And okay. I just want to remind you, we have about four, four more minutes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yes. So, um, so what we do is, uh, um, you know, we realize that the solution of high dimensional uh, hamilton jacobi Isaac equation is, is still far from being uh, desirable, achievable. Uh, you might get a different answer if you talk to Stan Osher. But uh, so we realize that it's, it's hard for us. So, uh, why don't we try to uh, learn it? Uh, and why, why don't we try to, to, to use some kind of search algorithm? And this is really highly motivated by the success of Google AlphaGo Zero. So we decided to, uh, to, to use the same similar strategy, use multicolor tree search algorithm to help us explore the space of possible trajectories and then give evaluations of those uh, possibly explored trajectories um, and use those information to come to refine uh, the policy and hopefully one can discover optimal or near optimal policies. Uh, so, so this means that multicolor tree search, the mechanism provided by multicolor tree search algorithm will provide training data sets for us to train um, and refine the policy and also a value uh, for the game state. Okay. Why do we consider that? Well, as, as I mentioned, high dimensional uh, Hamilton Jacobi equations are hard to solve, uh, et cetera. Um, and we, we would also like to, you know, in the same spirit as the first part of the talk, we would like to come up with a learning strategy that also encode dependence on the geometry of the domain uh, so that we don't need to recompute uh, this thing. We just feed forward this net network or evaluate this network and then, uh, and that would give us a reasonable inference on, on uh, uh, some uh, performant uh, policy to play this game. Okay, so this is a simulation. Uh, essentially, uh, by exploring the possible trajectories, you come up with some kind of heat map that tells you where you, one should go in order, to maxim in order to prolong the game as long as possible. And uh, you, this is how we train. Um, and we will jump to, uh, rather contrary to the message from uh, AlphaGo Zero, where they tried to discover knowledge from scratch, from pure uh, gameplay, we discovered that with, with uh, more modest computation power, you know, we actually need stronger adversaries. And also, uh, you know, we, we need to initialize the, uh, the multicolor tree search with, a, with some kind of heuristic. Uh, that we have in playing this game, and that would uh, improve the, effic uh, the efficiency in learning this, uh, how to play this kind of game. Um, I have one minute. So one heuristic. Uh, so we. So the the adversary in the in the learning setup is always uh, assuming that. Uh, the, the ad, that it's gonna do, assuming that the, pers uh, the pursuer is, con is gonna be stationary and then it's got, so that then the best strategy for the adversary would just find the shortest path to get into the occlusion. So that's how the adversary, the red dot is going to be steered in, in, the, in, the, in the learning of this uh, business. And uh, we, we also employ uh, two strategies uh, uh, to be refined by the Monte Carlo tree search algorithm. One is to say, as Benjamin said, uh, we just try to stay on top of P, uh, on top of the evader. And we call it the distance strategy or get closer strategy. And this is what happened. Uh, if you allow me one more minute, I'm essentially done. 
then at some point it's kind of like a cat and mouse game and then all of a sudden you know due to the geometry the red guy get into the occlusion and the game is over so the second one is to say okay instead of getting closer i'm gonna steer the shadow uh steer the occlusion set or the frontier set to be far away from the, the evader and uh this is also possible and uh, but it is not perfect as well because at some point uh you know, you tend to back up because that's where your, your, your frontier set will shrink the most. And uh, then due to some geometry, there, there will be a scenario where, you know, the game would end prematurely uh, than it should. So, um, which means that these two strategies are not really using the knowledge, uh, you know, perfectly. Uh, so, um, we will... So that's, but, but you know, they provide reasonable uh, starting point to, to have a more efficient training based on Monte Carlo tree search. These are the four player game. In the left, the pursuer will lose using one strategy. And then in the other, the pursuer will lose uh, based on the other strategy. Um, and uh, this is what happened when one strategy is going to, is refined by Monte Carlo tree search at, at uh, game time. It will, uh, significantly prolong the game because you have, you gain more look ahead of what's going to come, uh, happen. Um, and then we did some study, uh, on, you know, exactly how would, uh, Monte Carlo, uh, tree search become efficient and how to quantify this, uh, the, the efficacy of uh, such kind of search algorithm. And due to the time constraint, maybe in the breakout room, if there's some interest, I can show this in more detail. Um, we compare the performance over here. Uh, I will go through the two tables. Uh, here is uh, a two player game in this kind of uh, environment. And the Monte Carlo tree search uh, applied online during game time with the neural network uh, parametrizing the geometry of the domain applied to this domain, which is not in the training set, uh, yields this performance over here, uh, which is the, the highest performance compared to uh, the other strategy. All other strategies are run given a, a similar computational resource. Okay, so this is two player game uh, played by Monte Carlo Tree Search with a neural network policy on previously unseen environment. This is two player. Uh, this is four player games, two P's and two E's. And uh, well, I think due to the fact that maybe we didn't run enough, um, it's not well trained and then the situation, so the state space is more, much more complicated. So uh, this number of Monte Carlo tree search steps are not enough. And you see the deterioration in the performance uh, and with the same amount of computational resource, you see that the distance strategy get closer is, a, is actually yields the most reasonable uh, uh, performance like that. So uh, I guess that's all I have to say. Um, you know, uh, it seems that Monte Carlo could be used, but one has to be smart uh, because uh, you, you might end up needing a lot of computational power. And it seems that it is possible uh, from the two subjects that I've discussed today that we try to, you know, pick up the dependence of our solution strategy on the geometry of the domain. Um, and uh, so that's all I would say. And I would thank, I thank you for your attention and stay safe. I'll be happy to take questions.